Unfortunately, fashion is one of the biggest pollutants. From the production point until we see it in the stores, there is always waste. We are talking about water pollution, air pollution, land pollution. And any kind of pollution that you can think of, fashion is in it. and welcome to another episode of Ocean Purpose Project Opportunity Webinar. I'm Adams and joining me today is Kehana. Hi Kehana. Hi Adams. Hi everybody. My name is Kehana. I'm a full-time lecturer over in MDIS and I'm also the course leader for University of Sunderland and Teesside University. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Um, maybe can you share with us why is sustainable fashion important? Sustainable fashion refers to clothing that is designed, manufactured, distributed and used in ways that are environmentally friendly. A lot of consumers only look at sustainable fashion as buy cotton or like buy organic materials. That isn't all what it is. A well-known fact that a lot of production places, after they are done with the dye, they just dump it into the water. Imagine a t-shirt is it's rectangular, but you still have curves for your neckline and so on and so forth. What happens to the waste? It gets dumped into a landfill. Okay, yay, you have your t-shirts. You have to move your t-shirts from Southeast Asia, where your production place is, to the US. You have to either fly it there, or you got to put it on a cargo ship to bring it over to wherever you are. So there's always something every point of production. I see, I see. Maybe you could share with us more about your sustainable fashion module and what has inspired you to do this. So my module is called Exploratory Practice and it pushes the students to look at materials that are sustainable. So they are urged to create or to grow their own textiles and fabrics from scratch. What inspired me to do this was actually a small footnote in one of the module guides that had a recipe for vegan leather. I happen to be an avid brewer of kombucha. So I had some scobies hanging around. So I thought, you know what, why don't I try this? So anybody at home, if you want to play around with bioplastics, you literally just need cornstarch, glycerin and vinegar. That's it. Put it over a stove and you mix it up and it becomes bioplastics. I'm not even kidding. It's that simple. What are some amazing work that you and your students did? Some of my students have found a way to turn trash or food waste into bioplastics based on this recipe. And also recently, I've been working with OPP. I've been experimenting with seaweed. It's very interesting for me to know that we have native seaweed. I had about four different types of seaweeds. So I wanted to see what their strengths were and what I could do with them. Some of them I boiled, some of them I just started blending it straight out. So it became like a slushy some sort. And here are some of the results. This one was just a mixture of a, the seaweed from Pasiris. So what I enjoy about this are uh, number one, that it mimics leather. It's Pliable. Imagine if while it's still wet, I imagine that I'm able to form this into whatever shape I want for packaging. I think this would, would do so well for packaging, right? This one was mixed with kombucha. So you can tell that it, it has given it more structure and more body and it's not so gummy. I would also like to try working with muscle because I know PP is working on something very exciting with muscles and probably we could work something out with muscle. Yes, yes. We are working on this bioremediation and bioplastic project whereby we aim to deter algae bloom and mm -hmm. make pollution crises using seaweed and master aquaculture. When you are conducting this module, what are some of the challenges you have faced? Number one, there's not a lot of research into it that are published or that are public. I mean, vegan leather is not something that is new. Some companies have commercialized it successfully, but a lot of the information are not offered to us especially to people in the education sector. My number two problem uh, happened to be the fact that I am based in Singapore. With that, it comes with a lot of different environments, harvesting or growing. It has to depend on the environment quite a bit. Uh, another one would be, of course, at the end of the day, we want to try to make the vegan leather as biodegradable as possible. With vegan leather, the main problem that a lot of creators do have these days would be waterproofing. So that is, I feel, a problem that I do need a bit of help with. So waterproofing, we 
research and environment seems to be one of the biggest challenges for me. Thank you for sharing. How can people support sustainable fashion? Number one, make sure to take care of your garment. So that means taking a bit of time to wash it properly, to dry it properly. If you take care of your clothes, it will reduce the amount of things that you purchase. Number two, buy less. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I'm trying. I myself, I'm trying. Some of the clothes, of course, I have outgrown them. I will pack it up and I will give it away. Sometimes I understand how overwhelming it can be to try to make a change as an individual. But these are small steps that you can take that are very attainable. A good habit. Start. Thank you so much, Kiana. That was Kehana. She's the kombucha lady, course leader of University of Sunderland and Teesside University. School of Fashion and Design. Through this rapidly growing and ever-changing fashion industry, she hopes that the younger generations like us, that are the future of the world, will be more mindful of our environment and help to shift towards a more sustainable society. This has been the Ocean Purpose Project Opportunity Series.